Hello aspirants, I welcome you all to daily newspaper analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 23rd of November 2024. Now before looking into the list of articles that we are going to discuss today, I have an announcement for you. It is regarding our 2025 test series for UPSC prelims. This pre-storming batch 3 test series is starting on 26th November. But the orientation has already started on 21st November. So, if you have not enrolled for this particular test, you can click the link in the description and you can just enroll for this particular test series. So, with this note, let us move on to the list of articles for today's discussion. In this first article, we will be seeing about ICC, the basics about international criminal court. And in the second article, we will be seeing about uh, Coastal Regulation Zone, CRZ. And in the third article, we will be seeing about a new Tiger Reserve in Chhattisgarh. And in the fourth article, we will be seeing about the basics of IAEA. So, without any delay, let us get into the news article discussion. Now, look at this article about uh, Calcutta High Court judgment. This article actually talks about the judgment that has ordered for demolition of 140 hotels and restaurants that has been constructed along the beaches in Mandarmani, which is a particular beach town in West Bengal. So, this has been ordered because this construction actually violates the coastal regulation zone CRZ. So, what is the CRZ? Let us understand that from the prelims perspective in this news article discussion. So, let us start with the basics of the CRZ. See, actually this has been uh, announced under the Environment Protection Act EPA 1986. So, Actually, it has been taken care of by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, particularly under the Department of Environment and Climate Change. So, the very idea behind this uh, coastal regulation zone is to just segregate the coastlines based on their sensitive ecological sensitivity and to um, manage or maintain the activities that is have been taking place in this particular regions. So, we can tell that the coastal land up to 500 meter from the high tide line and area of 100 meter along banks. Those areas will be mandatorily be segregated and will be regulated and it actually just, just defines the boundaries to preserve the coastal environment. So, this is what the basic idea behind this coastal regulation zone. So, let us see the uh, regulation zone that has been demarcated. The first thing is CRZ1. See, the ecological sensitive zones are categorized as CRZ1. See, this zone is actually protected from uh, development activities. However, uh, certain activities like uh, setting up of uh, power plant and uh, uh, water distillation plant. So, those kind of plants can be taken place, uh, works for those kinds of projects can be taken place and most importantly even defense can also be taken care of in this particular zone. Uh, however, this has two subcategories. The, in the first subcategory A, this subcategory actually has the mangroves and then the coral reefs and the coral developments. So, those kinds of zone is known as CRZ1 part A and uh, subcategory CRZ1 part B actually talks about the intertidal zone. For those who do not know, we know that uh, the sea will be coming forward and going back based upon the gravitational force offered by our moon and sun based on the gravitational force offered by the moon. So, this to and fro coming in and going back of the sea water is known as tide and the highest tide line is nothing but the water level that will be reaching to the coast. So, the highest point until where the water can reach is this highest tide line and the lowest tide line is the lowest point that can be reached when it when the sea goes back in. So, the region between this is actually known as the intertidal zone. So, have this basic understanding. Now, the second CRZ category here it is actually talking about the urban area. So, these are like township that has been established already. See, here the construction can happen only towards the land and not towards the uh, sea. And for that development also, they have to get government permission. So, this is about CRZ2. Moving on to CRZ3. While CRZ talks about the urban development that has already existed, the CRZ3 actually talks about the rural area. So, CRZ 3A category means more than 2,161 people per square kilometer and CRZ 3 category B, it is less than 2,161 
per square kilometer. And in this particular rural area, the development or the settlement will be scattered and this particular region is only categorized as CRZ3. And talking about the CRZ4, see the territorial water or the water up to 12 nautical mile from the coast that is only is categorized as CRZ4. Here the discharge of un untreated water is actually restricted but any but any activity like uh, taking uh, uh, like fishing and any kind of uh, livelihood activities that do not actually affect the ecological sensitivity of, of the region is actually allowed under CRZ4. So, these are all the four different categories of CRZ that is currently in EPA Act. However, there are certain no development zone within this CRZ1. For example, within this CRZ, okay. For example, uh, CRZ1 here 100 meters from the particular zone is actually restricted for no development and uh, there is no specific uh, region for CRZ2 and for CRZ 3A 50 meter from the high tide line and for CRZ 3B 200 meter from the high tide line. So, this is the no development zone that you have to remember. So, with this understanding now let us try to solve this particular preliminary practice question. See here the correct answer for this particular question is option B 2 only because the first statement is actually incorrect. So, with this learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, look at this article about ICC or the International Criminal Court. So, the news is that uh, ICC has ordered for the arrest of Prime Minister of Israel due to the attack that has been taking place in the Gaza Strip and the militant group Hamas. So, while many countries has uh, supported this particular judgment, many has actually opposed it. But what is very important for prelims is this uh, International Criminal Court ICC. So, let us start with the basics of ICC. See, ICC is actually an independent international organization. So, it has no link with UN and it is not a body of UN. So, it actually investigate and prosecute individuals responsible for international crimes like genocide, war crimes and crimes against humanity. So, it is as simple as that. So, it can take action against a particular individual. So, we have a uh, a lot of difference between ICJ and uh, ICC, we will be seeing that in a minute. Before that, we will see certain basics about this ICC. So, it was established by a Rome statute and it was established in July 17, 1998. It is functioning from July 1, 2002 and it is headquartered in Hague in Netherlands. So, ICC actually prosecutes individuals. So, remember this word ICC, it means actually individual. Okay. So, it can even uh, undertake trial on persons like uh, state leaders, uh, military uh, commanders and even any person with high position inside a government if they commit a war crime. So, this is what you have to remember when it comes to ICC. So, talking about the jurisdiction, see it has supranational jurisdiction. So, what is the supranational jurisdiction? See, if a country, it is like an international uh, law. So, if a country is actually signing this particular uh, agreement, it means that the country is giving up its own law and surrendering the person, the particular person who has committed the crime to that particular organization. So, this is what the supranational actually mean. So, here the crimes committed on the territory of a state party to the Rome statute will actually be taken care by ICC and the crime committed by nationals of the state parties. This will also be taken care by ICC. Apart from this, ICC will take any case if it is referred by UN Security Council. So, it has no direct link between uh, UN and it is not a member of UN, but if UN SC that is the security council is suggesting a case to take, then ICC will be moving forward and taking the particular case and this will apply even if the particular country is not state party to this Rome statute. So, a very good example for those kinds of cases the genocide, war crime and crime of aggression. Now, moving on we shall see the structure how it functions. The Firstly, there will be a president, he will be managing the overall functioning of the court. Secondly, the judicial division, it comprises of judges responsible for pre-trial, trial and appeals. And there is a office of prosecutor, here uh, the prosecutors will be carrying out their investigation 
and they prosecute cases and there will be a registry where administrative support and outreach is actually recorded. So, these, so this is the structure of ICC. Now, let us see what is the case involved by India when it comes to ICC. Actually, India is not a signatory of uh, Rome Statute. However, if UNSC is suggesting or uh, asking ICC to take up case against a particular individual from India, of course, in India will have to comply with the particular law. So, uh, even though so, even though India is not directly linked to ICC, certain cases like a 26 by 11 Mumbai attack, during that time India actually in, in, insisted to bring in an international legal framework to address state sponsored terrorism. And uh, when and during the Rohingya crisis, uh, India was the most affected due to the influx of a lot of refugees. So, during that time also uh, India got affected and ICG was, ICC was initiating a investigation during that time. So, these two are very important cases that you have to remember. Now, let us quickly go through the difference between ICC and ICJ. See, when it comes to ICC, it takes care of individual. When it comes to ICJ, it takes care of uh, the matter between state, state to state. And secondly, it is under state Roman statute, uh, but ICJ it is under UN charter. And when we talk about the jurisdiction, they actually take care of uh, or deal with the genocide and war crime. But ICJ, they will take care of only the state to state relations and they will give uh, ICJ, ICC, they will be giving direct punishment for individuals, but ICJ, they, it will be enforceable by the state. So, particular direction will be provided by ICJ and the state has to enforce it through any law or step taken by that particular state. So, this is the basic difference between ICC and ICJ. So, with the, all this understanding, let us try to solve a preliminary practice question. Consider the following regarding the ICC. It was established based on UN Charter 1945. Actually, this statement is wrong. And the second statement says India is a party to ICC. This statement is also wrong. So, the correct answer is option D, neither one nor two. So, with this understanding, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, look at this article about International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA. So, the news is that IAEA has asked Iran to provide cooperation and to submit a comprehensive report about the nuclear activity that is taking place within the country. So, this is what the news is about. From the prelims perspective, knowing, knowing about IAEA is very important. So, let us start with the basics of IAEA. See, this IAEA actually promotes peaceful nuclear use. See, we all know about nuclear energy. So, nuclear energy it can be used in two different ways. The normal or the natural uranium, which is a nuclear fuel. This uranium has two isotopes, uranium-235 and uranium-238. So, this 235 is the fissile material. Uh, that is, it can undergo nuclear fission through which the atom can be splitted, generating energy in the form of heat. So, this heat is actually used to uh, boil the steam and that is how the steam will be running the turbine and generating the electricity that we require. So, this is how normally nuclear energy will be used when it comes to nuclear power plants. But when this uranium-235 is enriched, by removing this uranium-238, uh, this is known as nuclear weapon. And this IAEA, it take care of both the domestic use of uh, nuclear energy as well as this weapon use of nuclear energy. And most importantly, they actually have a more emphasis on not to use the nuclear energy in the form of destruction. So, this is a one single thing, how it can be used in two different ways. So, IAEA takes care of peaceful use of this nuclear energy. It actually prevents the military use of nuclear technology and it is a central intergovernmental forum. It is actually under United Nations, remember that. And it reports to UNGA, General Assembly and the UNSC, which is uh, U United Nations Security Council. Talking about the headquarters, it is in Vienna, that is, uh, which is in Austria. Now, IAEA has certain safeguards that has to be maintained in order to keep the check on, keep a check on nuclear usage. So, first is the material accountancy. So, they take care 
of the nuclear activity that is taking around the world and they even uh, take care of the domestic use of nuclear energy. So, while taking account of all the material, they actually prevent or they can presume if there is any threat in the future. So, this is the first thing. Secondly, they have rights to interfere and uh, they have uh, all the rights to inspect any country when it comes to nuclear usage in the form of wrong way. And they also have power to seal and monitor if there is any case of misuse of the nuclear energy. Apart from this, they have power to take care of the environmental sampling. This environmental sampling help us to identify how much amount of radiation, nuclear radiation is there in the environment or in the water, soil, anywhere in the atmosphere as well. And then the countries, they have to provide technical cooperation for IAEA in order to take care, uh, in order to take sampling or in order to uh, seal or monitor or in order to uh, undergo inspection. Apart from this, there is also a comprehensive safeguard uh, agreement that has to be signed by each country. So, when this agreement is signed, they have to follow all the regulations that is provided by IAEA and there is also additional protocol that should be maintained apart from all these instructions. Now, moving on, let us see about the International Conference on Nuclear Security in short called as ICONS. See, this is a meeting that happens every four year and this is the reason, this meeting is the reason why our IAEA could easily manage or maintain the uh, nuclear power usage across the world. So, in this particular uh, meeting, especially in 2024, certain decisions were taken. Let us see them one by one. Firstly, 145 countries or states have been reported about nuclear material issue, uh, loss of nuclear material or the radiation that is spread in their place. Apart from this, radioactive materials used in various sectors were actually acknowledged in this particular meeting. And they also discussed about the dirty bomb threat that, uh, that is being uh, posed by extremists. So, remember all these three facts. So, having seen about IAEA, now let us see about India's role in IAEA. See, India actually have not uh, signed NPT, but it is an active partner of IAEA. India has actually implemented IAEA safeguards on uh, civilian records and it even ratified the additional protocol that has to be followed when it comes to IAEA. And it promotes peaceful use of uh, nuclear power and we have not uh, supported any misuse of nuclear energy when it produces any potential harm. Apart from this, we have supported global safety and security and we even advocate for nuclear disarmament even if we have not signed for NPT. So, these are the facts that you have to remember. So, having seen about IAEA, now let us try to solve this particular problems question. In India, why are some nuclear reactors kept under IAEA safeguards while others are not? So, the correct answer for this particular question is option B. Some use imported uranium and others use domestic supplies. So, with this, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article, as the title itself uh, suggests, Chhattisgarh is going to get a new tiger reserve. The reserve name is Guru Gasidas Tamur Pingla Tiger Reserve. So, from the prelims perspective, let us understand what are all the important facts given in the article. So, let us start with basic information about this particular Tiger Reserve. See, it is very, very important for a preliminary test. See, this particular Tiger Reserve, it is located in Northern Chhattisgarh in the Sarguja region. When we talk about the area this particular uh, Tiger Reserve covers, it covers nearly 2,829.387 square kilometers, meaning it is the third largest Tiger Reserve in India. When we talk about the districts covered, Manendra Gag, Chirmiri and Bharatpur, in short called as MCB. Secondly, Korea, Surajpur and Balrampur are the particular districts that has been covered under this particular Tiger Reserve. And it actually have the proximity or it is adjacent, adjacent to Sanjay Durbri and it is actually adjacent to Sanjay Durbri Tiger Reserve and it lies between Bandavgarh which is in Madhya Pradesh and Palamu which is in Jagand. So, these informations it is very very important because uh, this is a newly introduced or newly uh, formed Tiger Reserve, newly announced Tiger Reserve. Now, talking about the significance of this Tiger Reserve, see it is the 56th Tiger Reserve of India. So, meaning it will contribute to Tiger conservation and biodiversity and the main reason for the 
announcement of this particular tiger reserve is the declining population of the tiger in the particular region and there is also plans for reintroduction of cheetah. So, this will actually promote ecotourism and local community development. Now, let us see about the tiger population in Chhattisgarh. See, in 2014, there were 46 tigers. Later, it declined to 17 tigers in 2022. But in 2024, nearly 30 tigers are there, including sub-adults and cubs. So, this is with respect to Chhattisgarh. When we take the population in this particular reserve, nearly 5 to 6 tigers are there. See, saving tiger is very important because they are the flagship species when it comes to the forest environment. Which means, if you want to conserve the forest, you have to conserve tiger. Now, let us quickly go through the conservation plans that are going to be taken place in this particular tiger reserve. This can be uh, named as tiger conservation plan, which are called as TCP. See, under this plan, uh, the particular infrastructure that is required for the monitoring of the population of the tiger will be installed and the prey base will also be monitored. And when prey base is concerned, it actually means the development of grassland in the particular region so that the herbivores will be high. So, when herbivores is high, it will be uh, automatically leading to higher prey base for tigers itself. Apart from this uh, corridor strengthening, we just saw that the tiger reserve is adjacent to another tiger reserve and has proximity to an, another two or three protected area, right? So, it this corridor actually strengthen free movement of the tigers and that is also a proposed uh, cheetah reintroduction plan in future if the conservation of the population of tiger actually takes place in a good way. So, so far we saw about uh, the new tiger reserve that has been announced in Chhattisgarh. Then we saw about the significance of the particular tiger reserve. Then we saw what are all the plan, the tiger conservation plan we saw about that. So, with this understanding let us try to solve a preliminary question which among the measures or part of the tiger conservation plan TCP for Guru Gasidas Tamur Pingla Tiger Reserve. Option A, first statement says development of grassland and water bodies. Second statement says strengthening road and wireless connectivity. Third statement says relocation of residents from villages. And fourth says translocation of cheetahs and wild boars. See, the correct answer for the question is option C, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, all the measures has been taken under this particular tiger conservation plan for Guru Gasidas Taimur Pingla Tiger Reserve. So, these are all important facts that you have to remember. With this facts, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, before ending the newspaper analysis, I have another announcement for you. The most awaited October 2024's editorial analysis monthly marathon has been posted in our YouTube channel. You can click the link in the description and view the particular video. So, with this, we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Now, thank you so much for listening.